So everybody will slowly be coming in here, and, and the topic that we're going to focus on today is, of course, growth. But really, the 2021 reflections you've had since using Street Tech. Some of you are in your brand new in the beginning, and you know you can learn and lean on some of the community right now on their reflections and and how those reflections are going to help you grow. What worked? What didn't work? What are we going to do in 2022? So I thought I'd, I'd kick off the meeting by sharing an email that John wrote, um, and I and, and I think it's a perfect way to kind of set the conversation in in the the way we're going to be going. So. The, the topic of that email is, do you know your first 10 sales, who your first 10 sales are in 2022? Think about that. And the quote he starts off with is, if you're not constantly adding more top of funnel opportunities, nurturing middle of the funnel opportunities, you're not going to have those immediate opportunities to help somebody buy and sell real estate. So he said, this morning hit me. The Wednesday Mastermind is a community of like-minded leaders. It's where some of the smartest minds gather every week to share, learn, and grow. Tom Ferry shared, we all love immediacy. We all love that quick cause and effect, but the most natural thing in the universe is to plant a seed today, and months later, you have a vegetable garden. And we know about sales as generating a new prospect, building a new relationship today, but it could be three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, 18 months from now, seven years from now, before you actually generate the income from that new relationship. And it sounds horrible, but you know what I'm saying. It's cause and effect, it's generate and convert, generate and convert. He, see, he says, it seems everywhere I go right now, I'm reminded of seasons. We have an orchid that was gifted to us by a neighbor and for two years it hadn't stopped blooming. It's incredible. As soon as the petal dies, another branch sp uh, sprouts. It's a flowering out of season but seasons in this world are real and a typical season lasts three months maybe you're in one of those out of season times right now this mastermind is a time to share what's working or not working we want to learn from you and we want to encourage you so if you're in the planning season let's use today to share 2021 reflections and learn what worked and what didn't work so we can see the fruit of your efforts maybe you're just entering this harvest season but this is about you today so I, I wanted to start there and, you know, give everybody the, the floor to, and, and I know I, I messaged a few of you, so you're welcome to unmute yourself in the beginning, um, just to start the momentum of this conversation. But let's talk about reflections. Let's talk about what you've learned so far with Street Text and how that's going to apply into your growth moving into 2022. Don't make me pick on somebody because I will. I'll get it out the way. That's, it's always easier that way. Let's go, Leon. Um, the, the first part, you got to start with the honesty of the year. Um, obviously, we can't do every single thing we want to do. So one of the things I'm doing now as I wind down the year is I'm, I've, I've already started pushing into next year. I've already got folks, the listings and whatever that want to come on market. So those are the ones I'll go ahead and I'll make sure I'm getting the engagement. But I'm looking back over a lot of the things that I wanted to implement out of street tax this year that I didn't get to do or didn't fully do. So the, the easiest way is to go back and tweak what you have going, but I'm going to go back and reach out and revamp a couple of things I was doing. And I'm laughing because I, I see Lania in here. And um, one of the things I seen yesterday that, that really brought her to mind was somebody had something they posted <clears throat> about it's not always got to be real estate. If you sit there and want to send just real estate stuff only, you lose them. So, you know, when Linnea's up there and came in, you see what she's doing, the coffee shops, this and that. I've got a couple lenders that are spamming me with the stuff. And um, this next year coming out, I'm going to go ahead and um, reach back into sending things out to get engagement in my street text with my bomb bomb and that using not real estate related so much as community related and stuff like that to get them in. And then just nurture what I have for the database I have. Because like I say, what, what good is it getting all these new leads if you're not working the old ones? And the old ones that I've gotten through the year are going to be more closer to moving and doing something than the ones that I'm bringing in now. So that, that, that's kind of my short reflection for the year. And, and there's systems, you know, that I have, you know, I'm, I say free 99 all the time. So between the YouTube, between the Facebook, um, all that there, I'll be tweaking those to go ahead and bring stuff up for clients to help drive them to the pages and stuff like that. And I'm even going to do a little more Facebook stock and market style this year to see what comes out of it because the only thing wrong would be to not try it at all. 
just like we say with everything, you know, you don't know until you try it. I don't care if that's if it's a different ad, if it's different follow up. Uh, sometimes you do have to push yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit. But again, you have no idea if it's going to work until you try it. I don't know how many people have come to me, you know, in the, in the past, I'd say even three years alone, you know, I'll never do video. Right. You might as well just drop that all together. I'm never I'm just not going to do video. And you fast forward a year later and they're doing video and they're crushing it and they're seeing, you know, new numbers that they haven't seen before. And it's like, hmm, I wonder what's changed. Right. It, 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 you just you, you, you don't know until you try it. And I, I kind of I think this is that time of the year where people really do need to realize it's, it's time to try something. Right. Do, figure out what other people are doing and you know, employ it in your day. So it's really a, it's, it's nice to hear you're spreading your wings a little bit there, Leon. So. Uh, get out there and uh, tackle Facebook. I think that's uh, that's a great goal to, to 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 tackle. And I will say, I mean, so anybody that has been here for a while knows that Leon is one of the most consistent regular tenders of this mastermind that I've ever seen. So <laughs> the the humility that he that comes from him as he's been here forever and he's created so much great um, wisdom for us. But he's always the first to learn something new and implement it. And I think having that humility every single Wednesday that I've seen him is what's made him successful. So, you know, we like to say that some of you people that are brand new have insight today that will change everybody's life. So free, feel free to share as that's coming to you. All right, who's next? Kim, Linnea, you guys feel free to unmute yourself. So, uh, I mean, I'm relatively new to Street Text uh, th just this year, but um, so I'm just adding it. It's, it's like another layer to what I'm already doing um, that I've learned from Krista Mayshore's coaching, right? And I love being able to share street text. Um, right, you like that, Leon? Um, but I love being able to share it with all my KMC people. And we're working on something right now with Jonathan and who else is in there? Jonathan, Stephen, and Marcus to bring street text to our KMC community, which is going to be huge. And just being able to share what we've learned both from both both directions and then mesh the two together it's it's super powerful um and Linnea with her her follow-up sequences like that's exactly what she's done is she's built these things out so you're combining um the the nurturing process which is what we learn with Krista plus video and then taking street text and and like stacking it and so they're kind of opposite but they work really well together and it's powerful. So I, I haven't got any listings per se, but I have a huge base um, of leads that we're nurturing. And I mean, we're having some very, um, very good conversations with a handful of them. So I know it's just a matter of time. And what we learned with uh, KMC is it, it takes three to six months. People don't just wake up and go, oh, I'm going to sell my house. They start researching realtors and so we're showing up uh in front of these people and it's just a matter of time and i can feel it's like right there it's gonna pop right there and i've got i think 800 in in my street text so it's pretty exciting that's all awesome thanks for sharing kim yeah and i can piggyback on that in that um we've got i think i've got 675 leads in our street text right now. And of those 675, I mean, there's probably a good 30 that we are consistently following up with and we're consistently nurturing. So like Kim said, um, you know, it's not overnight, but nothing in real estate is overnight. And if you, if you want to focus on just that overnight business, you're going to be one of those realtors who, who dies in the winter time and, 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 you know, soars in the, in the springtime. And so I'm not that I, I've kind of learned that with um, with street text, like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to build my business today. I'm building a business. I've got business coming at the end of next year. I've got business coming in 2023, and I know it. I already know who it is. Um, so I think, like you know, to, to tack on to Kim's point of it's not an overnight process. It's definitely something you have to work. You have to have systems in place. And to Leon's point, you got to be different than everybody else. I mean, I do something a lot different than most people. I actually just got a listing because of my strictly because of my community outreach, strictly because I have a partnership with the community. I go out there all the time. I talk to the same people all the time. I just got a listing from, and I actually have a second listing appointment coming up. So I think that you have to be different than everyone else and be consistent with what you're doing. Love it. 
feel free to ask questions as you're listening in, um, you know, for some more clarity on, on what we're talking about. Especially for, for people that are just like, what are you talking about here? Um, Linnea has been at it for a while. Kim's been at it for a while. Leon has as well. But yeah, keep sharing, guys. This is awesome stuff. DJ, go ahead, buddy. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Marcus. So uh, I've been with Street Tech since middle of this year, sometime middle of this year. And uh, I guess the biggest learning for me with Street Tech is um, just a focus on getting listings within the group. You know, and, and uh, Street Tech is probably one of the very, very few, the only, only company that I can see right now that focuses so much on getting listings because everybody is so much focused on getting leads and buyer leads. So I think the biggest learning for me is being just the, the discipline around learning how to follow up on leads and putting in the effort and the sweat to get to that point where you actually get a listing. So, uh, and just to give an example, a couple of things that have implemented is uh, the, the VA you know, process. I attended one of the webinars the Wednesday webinars where Janki came in and she talked about how VAs were helping her business. So I'm now work, working with Virtue Desk, and uh, I have a VA that that's helping me with the HVLs and uh, you know sending postcards. I send them physically, but he does the back end work. Uh, so that's really helping me. I still don't have any listing. I've done one transaction from a street tax lead, and that wasn't a listing; it was an investment transaction. But it's okay because at least I'm learning. The, the discipline and the effort that goes into getting those listings. So and it really doesn't, I don't care whether it takes me three months or six months to get a listing, but just the way uh, the effort, learning the effort and the discipline is, is a huge win. And lots of great sharing in these, in these meetings. So uh, thank you, thank you everybody. I'm gonna jump in real quick guys. Uh, so I think you know, obviously the bread and butter is getting the listings, getting the buyers, closing the sales, right? Where I think the bonus, the gravy, the real big gold is how easy it's growing your database, how fast you're going from like a few people to hundreds and thousands of people. Because over time, you guys have the tools you need to easily get the rest of their info. You know, like I think Linnea threw it out there the other day. She said, uh, I just had their address, but I went and I looked them up here and I found them here or, you know, like we have those tools. It's so easy nowadays. All you need is give me one little piece of somebody's information and I will find them. And you start adding that to the database. You start nurturing that and you are now thinking long term and your business will only keep growing and growing and growing. So don't let that fall through the cracks you know don't get disappointed when you don't have all the info like don't be afraid to go knock on the door i do it all the time if i'm driving around and i get a street text lead it's like only the address guess what i'm stopping by right now that's imagine i've had people go how'd you get here so fast swear to god because i'm not afraid to go knock on the door it's another human reaching out for some reason in one way or another they're somewhat interested in something. I've had people go, oh, I'm actually the tenant. I go, cool, can I have the landlord's number? I'll talk to them for you. They go, yeah, because I'm thinking about buying this house that I already live in. You know, So the point is take every lead and do as much as you can with it every single time. Do what others won't. I think that's the key. I mean, so far what I've learned is that you got to be different because if you just let things kind of be and fall where they may, it's like going, it's like letting these leads come in and letting your automations just kind of do their thing without any personal follow-up or anything unique, right? You could get a deal or two, maybe. I've seen it happen, but that's not any fun. That's like in the average 1% conversion person. And those are the same people that usually end up giving up too early. Yeah. And I always think about uh, every single contact, how many people do they know? You know, like you don't know if you're connecting with the pastor of a church. You don't know if it's uh, some teacher, you know, teacher, teacher um, networks are awesome. Like those, it's just a great way to get your foot in the door to a lot of people that 
most likely buy and sell homes, people in the union, you know, whatever. It's like, so what I'm saying is don't ever just look at a lead like, oh, they didn't put their phone number. Like it, you don't know who that is and who they know and how many, how, watch, you could just raise your hand. How many of you have gotten one lead and you close it and then they just keep giving you deals and you're like, oh my God, this guy just keeps sending me business. A lot of your leads are that person, <laughs> you know? So like I say is there's three pillars, right? Um, I learned this from Tom Ferry. There's people that will give you business and there's people that will give you business if you ask for it. And then there's people that they weren't, they're not going to give you business. They're just not going to, but they, they're, they're there to talk to. You can eventually turn them into a B, right? Somebody that will give you business if you ask for it once you get comfortable with them. So, you know, don't underestimate the, the, the database that you're building for the long run. This is a long run business. Don't ever treat it like a, like a, you know, quick business. There's a couple of quick things I wanted to add first. I mean, I, I like the idea, Gabriel, that you said, uh, you know, certain individuals, certain occupations have fantastic, you know, referral capabilities. I think teachers are, are fantastic. I also found hairdressers. So I think Wendy yes. is currently um, networking right now, if I'm not mistaken, Wendy, there you go. <laughs> Right. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. You know, there are people who talk to other people all day long. Right. So you're, us realtors aren't the only people who talk to other people all day long. So understanding what industries, you know, refer best, it's always good to to kind of be in on that. The other thing I wanted to quickly mention is <clears throat> for me, myself, when I got into real estate, I was, you know, for anybody who knows my story, I was just a, a young buck. I was a, a, a young child, so to speak. And um, social media wasn't anywhere near where it is now. And door knocking was something that I just had to do and something I've always been uncomfortable doing because the the feeling was I was imposing myself into their day. I was putting myself in 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 their way in a sense. That was my first feeling of it and it made me uncomfortable because I was going to sell their home. That was my objective. So that's why I was uncomfortable because I was feeling myself, well, I don't want somebody to come to me and sell my home and try to you know push themselves on me. It was a simple mentality shift, a mindset shift where it got me instead of I'm not going to sell their home, I'm going to help them, right? The actual understanding that what I'm doing is actually going to benefit them in the long run and just getting around that mental hurdle helped me considerably and understanding again, I'm not going for my benefit, I'm going for their benefit. And that simple again, that little shift of mentality helped me considerably. And just again, make sure that you're coming with an item of value, something that you actually are going to leave with them, something you're going, some information you're going to impart. So even if they, they don't invite you in their home, that's fine. You've left them an item of value. You've added to their day. You've added to their knowledge base, right? So just kind of shift that mentality and just understand you're going to help people, right? You're not trying to sell their home out from under them. And that alone will kind of help that confidence, that, that, you know, that, that drive inside to, to want to help. And again, that's what helped me. So hopefully that, uh, that little bit of information can help you guys as well. Actually, Sarah and I just had this conversation this morning because we were going back and forth on whether or not we should be calling people today and on Friday. And we came up with our script as to how we're actually, we are going to be calling people. Um, I don't care that it's a holiday, but we're not calling people to sell anything. We're calling to offer us, we're all calling them to serve them. And so I think like, you know, knowing that what you're doing is providing people a value, you're giving, you're bringing value to their lives. I think that's like the most important, like mindset piece to, to everything. And that's like with, with Gabriel a minute ago, he had said something about like, I don't care that I don't have their information. I'm going to find it. And I'll tell you, it's really hard for me to kind of get to that point because for me, I'm like, oh my God, that's an invasion of their privacy, right? Like, I don't know. I'm sure that I'm not the only one here who has that feeling or who has had that feeling. But, um, you know, I just had to remember that really it's not because you can find anybody you want on LinkedIn, you know, TikTok, wherever you can find someone everywhere. So I think, um, you know, just trying to like, understand that I'm not invading their privacy. I, they asked me for something. I'm providing them a service and bringing them value has been my biggest like aha, if you will. Yeah. And a huge point to that is like just confidence in what you offer people. I mean, you see it in real estate agent, like groups on Facebook, these horror stories <laughs> that people go through with an inexperienced real estate agent. So when you're confident in your skills to bring all you got to the table and you're seeking clients out that you're going to work with and you know you're going to serve them better than anybody else is going to serve them, then show up with that confidence, like seek them out, like save them from the mistakes that they're going to make. 
because people get in mistakes all the time. They get themselves like knee deep in, in muck and it, it's not a, a pretty sight. And you're going to, so if you look at that and say like, I'm confident, I'm the best person they can work with. I'm going to give it my all. Even if I'm new, I know I'm new. And I know that I'll talk to a hundred people who aren't new to figure this out and get them the best result on the other side of this. Cause I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for that. I'm in it for the whole experience. I'm in it because it's my career. I'm in it because it's who I am. So when you know who you are and how you're serving, then I'm going to find your information. I'm going to find you and I'm going to save you from somebody who's just in it for the money. I'm going to save you from the person that's going to just go after the jugular to get what they want, which is money in their bank account. But they, they wreck and ruin relationships all along the way. Like I love it when I think it was Wendy or somebody on a mastermind a while ago um, was it uh, talking about how they made a friend out of the deal? Like I made a, I legitimately made a lifelong friend out of this. Like I, I found them a home to buy. And now I have found a lifelong friend that's going to be coming over for drinks and the whole process. There is friends to be had out there, people. And if anybody needs a friend right now, it's all of us. We, we need friend. We need relationship. We need people around us that tick the way we do so like don't no shame in going after it when you're confident in what you believe in i wanted to add something uh as far as like calling or not calling because it's a holiday or whatever you got to remember people are all on completely different schedules you know so to trying to decide if you're going to call them or not because it's a holiday like what if watch i still do my coaching calls every if my clients don't reschedule or cancel if it's Thanksgiving morning between nine and noon, I'm doing my coaching calls, right? So that's just me. I, I think a lot of people out there, some people, yeah, they don't want to talk to you on a holiday or Saturday morning or whatever, but there are so many more that are, they're just, you know, they'll answer. If you call them, they'll answer. They're going to be there. They, they might not come out and meet you that day, but they will pick up the phone. And I learned this. I mean, for, I originally learned it when I was living in Vegas for a couple of years when I was coaching for Mike Ferry, that every, you know, people are literally at three in the morning up looking for homes because that town is just like, everybody's on this crazy different schedule. And then I realized, you know, it's not just Vegas, it's everywhere. Everybody has different days off, different uh, shifts, different mindset, whatever the case may be. Right. So just do, uh, do yourself a favor, do them a favor and don't hold back to reach out. Just go for it. Don't think, don't overthink it. Love it. Connection. It's all about connection. It's all about conversation. It's all about conversion. Connection, conversation will create conversions. Right? And so if we look for that connection, that's why, you know, I put that little post there because I, we, we feel that's weird. We talk about Facebook stalking, but there, I mean, why are you humanizing the process? You're putting video in there. You want them to get to know you. You want them to see you as being authentic and genuine as consultant rather than someone trying to sell them. But what what are you doing for yourself to find that human in the elite, right? Are you looking to connect with them? Are you looking to profile them? Are you trying to find out what, you know, <laughs> things you have in common, ways to build rapport that is not just about their home? Because if you profile them and you find out you're in the same group, you find out that you're, you know, you like the same team, you name it. There's that's the connection piece. That's the rapport piece. That's the winning friends and influencing people piece. And that's conversations that people are more likely to have rather than have you done any updates or renovations that I should know of. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. It, it, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and not getting those results. So why are you not getting those results? Maybe because you're asking the wrong questions. Yep. And always just to drop it in there, always consider the personality style. You know, everybody you talk to, there's something, there's one little key that you can say, and they're just going to open up like, bah, and talk to you about everything if you come in with the right approach and click that one little button and it's as simple as knowing their personality style, which you can learn to identify in a few seconds if you just know who you're talking to. It's not that difficult, right? And once you know it, it's, a, it's like, what do they say? Uh, once I've seen it, I can't unsee it. Knowing personality styles is exactly like that. Once you learn it, it's not hard. Do your own disk test, study your own disk test and don't forget to use that skill because oftentimes I think 
as we go through this journey, we're learning so much, we forget we have that tool. We forget, oh yeah, I'm really good at identifying personality, personality styles. Like, why do I stop doing it? And it's because you're not role-playing and you're not role-playing because you think you're like way over here now, which you are, but you're human. You don't remember, you're not a machine. Like a machine, you can program it and it'll just run and it doesn't forget a thing. It just keeps going. But we're human, we forget like, oh yeah, personality styles. So when you wake up and you start your day by doing a quick role-play, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, you just get right back in that mode of being the machine you need to be to be a listing machine, right? So get back on that. And um, I, I always encourage people, role play, practice your scripts, any scripts, they're all good. It's the one you master that's going to be the best. So practice it with intensity, just like an actor would, just like a doctor would practice his thing, just like a pilot would study his thing, right, Leon? Does a pilot take uh, doing the pre-flight inspection serious or do they just kind of wing it? <laughs> Unintended. They, they take it pretty serious, you know? So as realtors, I think our um, pre-flight inspection is our communication because really what is our business? I mean, if you take the communication out, it's a bunch of contracts and houses and whatever. You know, so get really good at, you know, going back to it, identify personality styles, know the approach with each person and um, use it. Remember to use it because most of you are good at it. You just forget to use it. You are, you know, I think we get really comfortable being really good and we kind of just think like, oh, I don't need to do that anymore. I'm really good. You know, so just wanted to toss that in there. It's wisdom bombs right there. Uh, Leslie, I, I think you had a question, but if you wanted to unmute yourself, that would be the best way to go about it. Unmute. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm new. I've just been doing this for about a week and I am being inundated with requests for home evaluations, which is great. I love that people are contacting me for a change. However, I already know that I want to change my ad to something that is going to get people who are selling their home not just wanting to know what it's worth. Has anybody had luck with any ads that gets them uh, more serious sellers, not just people that are curious because the market's so crazy right now, what they're sitting on? I'm gonna answer that one for you. <clears throat> you okay. already have the right ad running. People are curious okay. for a reason. And what you'll find initially starting okay. out to be so overwhelmed Maybe, I don't know if you're doing a 10 page full blown like movie, you send them, narrow it down, shorten it. There's a lot of people in the insider group that, that, that have set up for just a one page. Um, Sorry, what are you if, saying? I need to narrow down my CMA? If yeah, don't worry about sending them the whole full blown novel. You don't need to send a thousand page, whatever. There's people in the insider group that have one page ones that get it out there. Um, the idea behind it is to get the engagement. And if they're engaging to you, you're already on the start. And is so, there okay so i'm probably screwing this up then you know i'm not doing an actual cma i'm doing the cma on our board figuring out the value and i'm just sending them an email saying this is what i've done this is what i you're sitting at right now at this value i could put a sharper point on that if i come and do a quick visit um is so is i'm a little bit rusty on conversion i've never really had the confidence to um, do that. And I'm wondering who or what people are doing to sort of change the conversation or what, what are people doing? I literally don't know. Like I'm sending this email, telling them the evaluation and then saying, let me know if you need me. Okay. So I'm going to um, kill that last sentence about the, let me know, turn around and you're sending something out, just change your follow-up to reach out to them to ensure that they did get what you sent. Do they have any questions? make it a yes, no format. You keep it really short. So they're not worried about taking 10 minutes to get it. And as you get that, you'll, you'll find you get your feet in the door because you're offering to do the walkthrough. And um, then depending on what you have for your drip campaigns, a lot of us run um, home bot and stuff like that. So they're getting the touches and then it's all in the follow-up because very few people are going to get up this morning going, I'm selling my house Friday, come do it. So you're, you're already on the right track. If you have people responding, People cry about their ads not getting action. You're getting activity. So you're on the right I took path. a full-time job. I'm getting, it's really good. The response I'm getting is great. 
it's You're overwhelming. Right and it's You're also right hard path. to, um, you know, out of the 20 ads I've got or 20 responses I've gotten in the last five days or so, um, I'm kind of overwhelmed with doing the CMAs. And then I sort of get into the mindset where, well, so no one sold their house out of those 20 people, this isn't working. <laughs> so um, I probably have to tame that thought a little bit. Leslie, do you have a do you have an action plan that you're running as you're running the ads after you send in the um, after you send them a CMA? What are you doing afterwards when they actually communicate with you? That's, uh, that's the biggest and, thing. And complaining that I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so I am sending. I've actually turned off several of my automations because they were freaking me out. I personally, I know this is called street text, but if someone tries to sell me something over my cell phone, I just immediately am block them like I don't and so anyway that's my personal I don't want to be reached out that way but so I'm sending them the CMA and I so in the CMA I say uh what are your thoughts and some of the people respond and then I just say let me know if you I'm embarrassed <laughs> to say no no don't don't be you have a you have a problem a lot of people wish they had do not be embarrassed there's more than one right way believe me so so first off welcome to the group leslie thank you take a minute have your coach send you the link so you can go look at some of the other facebook stuff posted for replays and then definitely go in the insider group and post the question just say hey what are some of your guys's engagements ways of following up i, I haven't done that you, yet okay you're gonna, you're gonna get 100 responses every one of them will be good find the one that works for how you do things and run with it and then like i said mm -hmm. the, the thing that makes this group the most unique everybody helps everybody it's it's not a it's a healthy competition not a bad one and and you'll find yourself but you did the right thing you asked a question today the closed mouth don't get fed so you have a good problem believe me thank you, that's, you. A lot. that's yeah. great i will go on the facebook and i'll get a uh i'll get some responses see what everyone else is doing and feel out thank you a couple ideas i would have to look into um, yeah. and I'm sure Ira's already talked to you about that would be obviously home bought at a dollar a day it's hard to beat are you where are you located Ontario Canada Canada yeah. have that option um <laughs> but definitely bomb bomb <laughs> bomb bomb will be a phenomenal way at a dollar a day to get in there customize some of those automations so that you're setting expectations around the value they're going to be getting and they're okay getting sorry so bomb bomb is always a video bomb bomb would always be a video yeah because it's, it's you your body language and tonality is everything in this person getting to know and like you they don't have any other way to do that so uh, opposed to that you could be sending the best value in the world but what makes you unique or different and text gets lost in translation even if you're the best writer ever um that gets lost in translation because what they're doing is they're coming in with that emotional uh wherever they're at in their life and they're going to bring that into that interpretation so if they're having a bad day and you just, you know, they thought they were getting the immediate value and they don't have it on the other side or they, you just gave them something different, they just may not interpret it the way you wanted to. But if you have a video there that shows you're being genuine and authentic and being consultant and being helpful and here's how you're going to get them more information and you kind of value add along the way in that, that's going to be how they get uh, the only one that is terrified of sending videos to people? No, yes. it's not. You're not the only one there. No, everybody is. I wanted to add Leslie, a Leslie, this is Adrian. Don't worry about your hairdo. Don't worry about whatever. <laughs> just sit hair? in front of the camera and say, hi, I'm Leslie. I just sent you blah, blah, blah. People want to be engaged that way. This is the modern way of doing business. Okay. They don't care what you look like. Uh, you know, I think that we pay too much attention on all these little things. At it like this. So okay. that's my take. <laughs> okay, thank you couple of things I want to add to that. Uh, as far as that not, you know, you don't want to be solicited by text when you sign up for something and they respond. I think most people get excited about that. They're oh, like, yeah, that's a good point. Right? It's, it's like, if I don't people. sign up and you're trying to sell me some random thing, then yeah, I get it. But if I sign up for something and I get a response, I'm like, wow, that was awesome. I'm not lost in the internet, right? And number Very two is point. going back to your original question is, you have to find out their timing and motivation because some people will start to think about selling months, months before they're even ready. And uh, some people do it the night before. They're literally laying in bed and they're like, you know what? F it. Let's sell the house. And they submit. So 
the, the point is you got to find out their timing and motivation. Like everybody, we all want to know the basics, uh, you know, get the listing, whatever, but you got to dive in deeper. Why do they want to sell? Where are they going next? What's their plan? What if they don't sell? Are they going to rent it? You know, ask lots of uh, probing questions that are going to give you the full picture, right? You guys know that guy with the beard, with the Afro that paints, what's his name? Bob oh, something? Someone. Okay. When he starts painting, you don't know what the hell he's about to paint. You just, he's just like, right? Each question is like a stroke of the brush. And by the time you ask enough awesome questions, you have a clear, beautiful picture and you know exactly how to help them. Okay, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Can you tell me, so uh, out of the, I'm guessing around 20 leads that I've gotten, mm -hmm. eight people gave me their phone number. Mm -hmm. And so I have two questions. I'm sorry I'm hogging this. If you want to find out their timing and motivation mm -hmm. and you don't have their phone number, what do you do? What do you say? How do I find out what to say? Here's the and good if news. You have their phone Every number. Also, where do I find out what I should be saying? Here's the good news. Everybody on this call is a master of those problems. Okay, so good. You're going to learn how to do that. There's softwares, there's ways to find out more about them. But ultimately, if you really just had their email address, you could just email them back and go, hey, thanks for reaching out. Just wondering, where are you going next? That's it, done. That is so non aggressive. Anybody's going to just look at it and go, oh, that's kind of nice. You know, I'm going to Maryland or whatever. So at the very least, respond, have um, questions, you know, have some very, very good questions uh, to find out more about painting the picture of their whole scenario and what they want to do and what are their goals. And you'll, uh, that's going to solve a lot of your problem is find this, as far as finding more information, that's, that's going to be easy for you. I think, okay, so I, I think you can also, good. oh yeah, sorry, you can go first. I, I, the, I think you can also position yourself in their place. What would you ex want them to ask you? You know, if you have all these questions, that's what I tell most of my sellers and buyers, uh, especially my sellers, you're discussing price, et cetera, et cetera. You say, position yourself as the buyer coming into your home. What are their expectations? What they would like to pay for this property, et cetera. So do some of that, put yourself in their position and decide you know, you'll find the conversation that needs to be held if you do that. At least it's okay. worked for me. I okay. think as well, something to add in here as well, Leslie, is that the what you're discussing and what you're bringing up is something that everybody in the entire world at some point is asking themselves the same question. They've encountered the same thing. Like I've encountered the same, same you know, challenges there's a, uh, there's a mindset here too, though, that I think is really worth uh, digging into because right now we're talking a lot about the how and the mindset is around now versus tomorrow because you're going to be in business tomorrow. You're going to be in business three months from now, five months from now, six months from now. And the key is you don't want to accidentally trip yourself up because you've done all this work of investing into your success you've already planted 20 CMAs, you've, you've planted 20 seeds. So you wanna actually go and actually see those seeds mature and turn into the harvest. Like Thanksgiving is literally a time to celebrate the harvest. Like we are moving into a time of celebrating the harvest. So we want you to be able to celebrate that harvest. So the mindset that you, you've already talked about that you know that you're challenging yourself on is, am I seeing this as a business or am I trying to, extract the seed before it's matured into fruit. Because if we try to pull the seed out when it's just starting to grow too soon, and seasons is just a normal part of business. Like it's a normal part of life. Every single person who's going into real estate to transact is gonna have a cycle, a season. And there it's three months, it's just business. Like every single business in the entire world will have like their seasons to marketing. And so when you start, like you're just week one, so fast forward three months from now, and this conversation is going to sound very different because of the level of activities you're doing. So keep doing those activities for the next three months. 
and you're yeah. going to have a lot of immediate results come January and then in February and March and everything else. So keep that that mindset of long term versus immediate. And I think if you do that, the rest like the hows, you're going to like there is a wealth of information and there are people in this community too who can really really help build up that those like strong mindsets that will keep you to that awesome. successful part. Awesome. And you think that a good resource is, I, I don't have, I haven't even visited it yet, but our Facebook group. Yeah. Okay. It's a great place. Ask questions, share okay. what you're doing, get feedback. I was a pretty good one too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks we, everyone. We've had it. lots of conversations. And one of the conversations was get your butt to the mastermind and look where she is. So yeah, we're I was growing. Late. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, I'm so glad that you're here because this is how we learn. This is how we grow. And as Leon says, sometimes when you're a veteran, you forget about some of the new foundational concepts. So sometimes for someone who's a veteran that's done real estate for so long, bringing things back to basics is helpful because it's just a reminder that uh, human nature is to make things more complex than they need to be. And we're in an age where so much information is being thrown at us in every direction. You could quickly figure out every day you're doing everything wrong if, you, if you're looking for it, because there's so much complexity out there. And I think in the day and age where there's so much complexity, bringing things back to the most simplest of things is the most important thing that you can do. So it's really just sim simple. It's all about relationships. It's all about how can I serve you as opposed to how can you serve me? And when you start like looking at everything you're doing and asking that question, is there something in what I'm doing serving them or am I actually just serving me? Because serving me would be, I want a listing now. This is how this works. Wendy's up, she's moving, she's unmuted. She has holiday ideas to share. Thanks, so Sarah. Okay, I'm to okay, so um, welcome to the group. You will love it. And Wednesdays will be your new favorite day of the week. So, um, so that's exciting. Uh, sorry, I'm, you know, getting my hair done because I actually had COVID last week. So I had to cancel my appointment and then oh, I got God. So I know, I know, but I'm back. I'm fine Good. and, Good. and um, living the dream. So after I get beautiful, I am going to make a, a holiday video and um, the HomeBot allows you to send a video to everybody in HomeBot, which I think we have, I don't know, 3000 people. And it's cool because it'll send it in increments to where you don't go to Google jail, you know, and then um, you can get through to everybody that's getting an updated home value. So I was thinking, I always send out a wireless during the holidays email. And now that we have all these people in HomeBot, I thought it would be great to do like maybe outside because I'm going to decorate this weekend. Um, and I have a 12 foot skeleton that I already put a Santa hat on and a scarf. So I think I'm going to do one with Scully and, you know, talk about why it was during the holidays. So has anybody did anything like that yet? Not me. Not yet. Oh, come on. I'm sure someone has it. Anyway, it is a good time to list during the holidays because um, everybody's waiting till after the holidays to list. And when you have less competition, you make more money. So um, it's always a good time. And people think that, you know, no, I'm going to wait till spring because that's when it's the best. And technically it's not because when everybody puts their house on the market, there's way more competition. So we need to tell everybody um, how it's an amazing time to list right now. And that will get you some listings. So that's a good idea to send um, maybe a quick video out to those 20 people that you have um, to, you know, explain to them why they need to do that. Troy is saying something, three-day open house. What are you saying? Three-day open house because people had time to come and view, sold three days later. That's what he said. Oh, yes. Yeah. When, I, anyway. I actually sold my house during the holidays. We waited till the day after Christmas. I'm like, okay, let everybody rest. We don't want anybody through our house on Christmas Day. So in Christmas Day, very next day, house hit the market, three days of open houses and three days later 
sold at a time where houses weren't moving all that much, but I knew that people had time to come and view. And I knew that other people weren't listening at the same time. So when the only houses that are available, people have time to view, it's a awesome so, strategy. Guess when the most active real estate searches is everywhere. Like what day of the year is the most? Uh, yeah, it's it's literally <clears throat> Boxing Day, December twenty sixth. It's the most active holiday search everywhere. Everybody. I'm, all, I'm always estate. showing houses on Black Friday because I run Black Friday specials. <laughs> <laughs> you can send out a list of homes to your leads and say, "Oh, Black Friday special," and they're like, "Oh." <laughs> Even though it's not really special. <laughs> tell me, tell me more about, about this Black Friday special, Wendy. I think you always have those awesome ideas. Yeah, no, I literally I just um we use Ylopo. So we send push listings out, and that'll be my subject, you know, Black Friday sale, you know, at LV Sweet Homes. And here's a list of homes that you may like to check out. I am working Friday. Wanna go see them? So, you know, um, it's just another way to reach out and people always open black friday stuff so yeah. i always open every black friday thing i don't care what it is i always open oh them. i know well, i just I bought a stupid hydro know. row because of a black friday yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't. I have to start getting on a rowing machine my husband's like what are you doing i'm like i'm in a row it's Mine gonna be a full body workout <laughs> i just i just like realized something in the chat is this true there's no boxing day in the u.s no yeah there's no boxing day See, one of the you, other things, you, you, but the yeah. United States is like the, every event is amazing in the United States. Like I, I want to go to every event. Like if you're going to do like the 4th of July, it's insane. If you go uh, Halloween, it's insane. If you go Thanksgiving, it's insane. Like it's boxing day. Like, I can't believe that we have a whole week in Canada where it's like the most incredible sales of, of the year. We don't have black Friday. Technically they do, but we're adopting it now, but that's probably we have Boxing Day. They've got Black Friday. That blows my mind. It's Kwanzaa. Uh, it's Kwanzaa on the twenty sixth. Oh, <laughs> so that's. But you know, one of the keys in point we tell people about the holidays. I say, hey, look at it like this. If we get the house on the market in this current market, it's sold. It's off the market. Now you guys have the whole holidays to sit home, enjoy the last Christmas in your house, and then start packing up to go out in the new year. You don't have to deal with the headache. It, it, you know, it's all about how you present it and how you sell it. Uh, that, that's what it comes down to. And, and Leslie, one of the things being new, you, you're going to hear a lot of people, even the older veterans in here, that don't like getting in front of the camera. So start out behind it. And if you do the bomb bomb stuff, you, it's just a small little picture of you in the screen that you give them anyway. Um, you know, the, the hardest thing to do is to do nothing at all. And once you take that first step, success follows. So just, you know, go. Um, Jeff Moss said it the other week, and I'm laughing. The refresher was R&D is rip off and duplicate, not research and development. So feel free to go R&D through the group. And believe me, you will jump in leaps and bounds because you get to learn where others might have stumbled and turned into a success. And now you won't stumble. You'll just go. Awesome. Thank you. Leon's right. And I did a video um, on Tuesday yesterday um, where I was just highlighting how to use the insider group to find what you're looking for. So you can watch ah, okay. that, kind of get a good idea. Where would I find that? It'd be in the um, in the feature. Oh, in my in, dashboard? Your, no, no, not in your dashboard. It, Ira will point a direction to you. It's in the features okay. or announcement section, um, or he'll just send you a link. Oh, yeah, on the Facebook, Facebook group, it's in. Yeah, in the, I can find that. Facebook. Yeah, and it features. Yeah, that's like okay. it, it's now called features. They change from announcements, but yeah, it's the announcement section. I can figure that out, Ira. You don't have to do it. Thank you. I so, think I bugged Ira enough. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to highlight since Wendy's on here is I remember last year, I was so impressed when she went in and changed her initial auto email. And I think this is the challenge for all you guys is to don't stay complacent and let it be the same all the time. Change it with seasons. Like this is the perfect season to change it with Thanksgiving and Christmas around the corner. Wendy changed her auto email to reflect like sitting near the Christmas tree. It was holiday season. It, it felt very much in tune to the times. So that's, ah, that's, that's great. That's my challenge. I know. I hope I didn't date that because I think I'll just use it again. I could just put <laughs> Yeah, that was in. a great one. You did. Like, go check it out. But another thing is, you don't have, like, one of the best things is to reach out to your database and just say thank you for Thanksgiving, you know, and, 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 a, and an attitude of gratitude, right? Just to say, hey, just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving. Um, and, you know, keep it simple because part of that is just reaching out genuinely and, and reaching out to your list. I know you'll do that, Leon. 
I know you'll do that. So it's not always about the real estate, right? It's not always about the real estate. That's why the community aspect of the just being human <laughs> and just saying, hey, I just wanted to reach out to everybody and say happy Thanksgiving. A lot of people won't get that message ever, let alone have a video behind it. So just just an encouragement to you today. Okay. So I think like these are like the amount of insight that's come out of this mastermind is just constantly blows my mind every single time. And a lot of the topics here have been really good on like what to do when you are, you know, you're building your database and it's new, like how do you respond to people, uh, that kind of thing. But remember, and Leon, you talk about this every single week, your database, you've got a lot of people, actually you kicked off at the beginning of this, like you have a lot of people in your database who you already know. So these are going to be your past clients, people you're working with this year who maybe they phased out, like they just, they, they weren't able to buy this year. So one thing you can do uh, for next year is you can send an email. And if you're not doing this already, do this, like wait till after Thanksgiving, but then send it is, hey, I'm just planning for my 2022 year. And I just want to ask or just check, are you or confirm, are you out of real estate next year? The reason you're asking it that way is because you want to find out, you want to ask a hard no, because if you ask a hard no, they're going to have to respond. No, actually, I'm still in. So you can actually revive old people that you're already working with who, who, who maybe have like filtered out and you're like, oh, I thought they were out. But like you can revive them just by asking that question. And they say, no, I'm actually I'm, I'm interested in, in doing a deal in 2022 because you're always thinking, OK, how do I make my how do I make sure that my pipeline is filled? Not just today, but January 1st, February 1st. So you, you know that you always have deals coming, that you're prepared and you know, okay, these are the names of the clients that I'm working with on those days. Have I followed up with Bill? Have I followed up with Tom? Have I followed up with Susie? Have I followed up with Mary? Like, because I know that they're all going to be like, they're ready in January 1st. And so what you want to do is you want to reach out and try to get to everybody that you've already generated in the last 12 months. You've done all the work, you put it all in, you've, you've, you've built the database. Now follow up with everybody and ask simple questions like that. And uh, number two, you know, so Wendy, you shared that amazing idea um, about dropping off the pies. I thought that was such a great way. Like, so the same thing, like Thanksgiving, but immediately after that, we have Christmas coming. It's the same thing. Like, come, this is a great time to, as, as an, like a really good excuse to, to connect with people face to face, personally drop off something, could even be just a card. Uh, just to say hi, say that you've been thinking about them, hoping they're still loving their home they bought, or like, you know, you know what I mean? Like just you're connecting. And that obviously is a great way to identify early on, hey, you know what? You've been in this house for five years, seven years. You may be ready to look for that next place. And so you can now have that conversation early at the beginning. And so you're ready, you're ready building your book of business for 2022. So those are just a few ideas that you can actually take with your existing sphere, your existing database, the people that you've already generated. And I love what Tom Ferry said, which is, you know, you always got to be generating at the top of the pipeline so that you have immediate business three months from now. But fast forward, you generate so you have immediate, generate so you have immediate because the immediate is going to come after that season. So the season is three months. It's going to be six months. It's going to be nine months. It's depending on the individual. So when you're talking to them, try to identify what is their season. Is it, are this person three months out, six months out, nine months out? Set a reminder so that when you wake up three months from now, six months from now, the names pop to the very top. Hey, this is somebody who said they would be ready today. And now you have a really smart list of people that you can actually prioritize who you're focusing on at the beginning of that month. So you pick up the phone and you call because they said they were going to be ready six months from now and it's and it's five months from now so so the time has taken care of itself and you've taken care of the organization so you're ready for the book of business that's already prepared for you like you've already done all that work generating getting them and then the, the other thing which we're doing this whole mastermind which is about is review reflect and review reflect and review i think that is like the most incredible way of of really 2xing the next year simply by asking yourself where did I get business from last year? What marketing really resonated with people? What email did I send that I got the most responses from? What, um, what did I do that had great impact for my community? Ask those questions, write down what worked really, really well and make sure you double down on those next year.
Because you do those simple things, those really, really simple things, you're going to 2x your business next year. You're going to 10x the outcomes because it just multiplies year after year. So I just um, wanted to drop those little thoughts as well because we've been talking a lot about what to do with the immediate, but there's also all of that book of business that you've already done work with. And I wanted to see you harvest that too. Wendy, did you have anything to say? Oh, no, you muted yourself. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just listening. I forgot I was still not muted and I'm, it's kind of loud in here. So yeah, I'll no mute worries. myself. But yeah, no, I'm excited to, um, once I do the video, I'll post it in the group so that you guys can kind of get an idea. But um, yes. Okay. And here's my goal for, for this year too, is to get you all more to share within the community. And and I, and I mean that in the sense of you find something that you love that's working, a video that, that you're proud of, or even that you just need some, in, like, reflect, need some people to give you some insight on. Share it. Post it. Because the more we start doing that interactively within that community, the more content that naturally builds. It, it gets us all to kind of get comfortable with sharing and putting video out there. So, and that... And that just is the challenge this year, you know, get very comfortable in this day and age we're living in as uncomfortable as it is for you to go virtual. It's going to be one of the best things you can get comfortable with. And I think in this community, I've found that there's so much constructive feedback that goes back and forth. Um, so I would say share. Definitely do that. The second I find things that work, I'll share it with everyone. And I've seen so many people like share their auto email and their, their video email, their follow up, a personal example of a CMA. Um, there's so much of that, but I want to see more of it because you guys have so many amazing ideas out there. Just share or just share if you have something that comes to mind. It doesn't always have to be about a follow up idea. It could be, hey, you know, I just wanted to share this awesome thing I learned that I think would help with all you in da 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 da. Um, and that'll go a long way for a lot of people in that community. Yes, 100%. Oh, and then Logan, I don't know if you're on the call anymore, but um, still on the call. But so we've been working a new ad and it is having crazy success right now. So if you're looking for a new angle for seller leads, you need to reach out to Logan and you need to be running the upside or downside uh -oh. ad. I think that's what it's called. What's it called? Um, it is just Upgrade like great downsize. And, uh, it's actually in a couple hours, we're going to be doing the custom ad class again. So for everybody who joined, uh, la or two weeks ago, I guess, or a week and a half or whatever it would, would be, um, we went more kind of shaped some of the other ideas and angles that we had, but, um, that ad has absolutely taken off. So I did kind of promise everybody that anybody who does show up, I'll do my best to kind of help you guys build it into your accounts, uh, on this next call. So, uh, can I show up for that? Absolutely, please do. Yeah, I don't so think what, I signed up for it. What you'll see is if uh, if you go to the your main dashboard, click on where it says book a class, and okay. uh, the custom ad workshop is at the very top left. Go ahead and register for that, and it goes live in just uh, yeah just under two hours from now. And um, yeah, I'll absolutely be able to help everybody kind of build one of those, and they're working fantastically well. Uh, and recommend downside. It's an upgrade downsize. The idea and what we're going to want you guys to do is make sure you come armed with um, an IDX link of some sorts or the ability for us to help you build one either from your website or through MLS or however you want to do that. But we're going to want a saved search of properties, you know, of a particular size or not too big, you know, all sorts of different parameters. I'll help you with, of course. But um, yeah, we all we need that is, is that and and if you have a nice picture, uh, that would also help. I have a couple defaults that we can use, of course, that uh, should fit most locations, but it's always uh, important if you're using, you know, specific imagery that it's reflective and reminiscent to your local area. Because if I was to run an ad here in British Columbia with palm trees in the background, my, uh, my local market's going to look at that and see that it's not a local image. So do make sure that the imagery that we're using lines up with a home in your area. Sorry, Logan, can you say one more time what I should show up to this uh, we'll have an hour to work together. I'll have plenty of time to get you get you things going. But if you have a website um, that has an IDX link, like the ability for somebody to go on your website and um, search for a property, let's say, um, like if you have that, that's great. Otherwise, uh, just uh, the ability to log in through uh, Matrix uh, through your MLS. I'll be able to show you all this. Once we get, I'll get you to share your okay. screen. We'll help you. It sounds way more difficult than it truly is. It's actually ridiculously simple, and I'll be I'll make sure that you have everything you need. 
And then why don't you just mention some of the results you're seeing right now, Logan? Like these, these are in areas, by the way, that we're struggling to get seller leads. So like this is just... So far, um, I would say average uh, 350 per email is what we're seeing. And these people are typically, um, from what I'm hearing back anyways, uh, ready to get going because they, they realize that they need to start their home search. But before they do, obviously, the, the angle is back to them. Well, I want to help you with your home search. But in order to help you with a, a home search, we need to establish a budget. Best way to establish a budget is to value your current assets. So let's actually start there. Let's get a home valuation done. Let's figure out where you are in terms of finances. And then we can consider, you know, searching for your dream home. So I'm seeing so far a max price for anybody running it was six bucks an email. Um, the lowest I've seen so far was $1.18 an email, which is great. And the average is right around three bucks, three twenty-five. That's great. Thank you. You guys who are having those problems with your what's your home really worth funnel, that's the ticket. If someone were to buy your home, would you sell it? The equity ask. Maybe there's another way. And I think Logan may have an opportunity for you to find it. I'm going to throw something in there since I started. I can kind of go to the end to finish. The only thing when you say reflecting back for everybody in 2021 is, I mean, we all, like I said at the beginning, had things we didn't get done. But going forward from here, you've got 30 something days to make a difference in 2021 and 2022. So the reflection you should have leaving the group today is what can I do between now and the end of the year that I didn't accomplish this year to get me where I want to be next year. And even if it's just one item, like I said, the power of one, that the pebble in the pond, how it spreads out. So if you sit down and, and I just say, don't cheat yourself. If it's something easily accomplished, go for it. But make sure if it's something easily accomplished, there's going to be a positive result or something that comes out of it. Not just one of those, oh, I did something, I'm good. Don't, don't sell yourself cheap. Go do something that's going to give you a result. So look back, reflect on what it is. Go look and see if you had a list somewhere. See what you didn't get done. Pick the one item and do it. And at that point, you know the reward is going to show up. So... The only fault would be to do nothing at all and cheat yourself by lying to yourself because, you know, you might fool the root, but you're not going to fool yourself. So go find at least one item, the power of one, make it happen. Because like I said, even now, I posted that picture in the insider group. Feel free to R&D it. Um, send it out. Go Google safety tips for Thanksgiving. Put that in there. It takes you three minutes to build a damn thing and send it. So I got you halfway there. If you want to use that, feel free. Um, but do something, you know, one thing. Hey guys, I have a, I have a fun idea that you can do for um, like sending out in your follow ups for December is like your favorite memory from your childhood around the holidays, like at Christmas. I have actually a video where I did that. Do you want me to share that in the group? Yes, always. Don't even hesitate. Okay. And it helps that I'm from North Pole, so I get True. That, that little Alaska spin on it too. So yeah, I'll share it. Thanks. Wendy, you're unmuted for a second. Did you want to share something or did you just happen to press No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, sorry. <laughs> hey, Kim, did you say you're from the North Pole? Yes. So you're up there in um, Fairbanks? Uh, right outside of Fairbanks, yep. Is, is Santa's house still up up there? Yes. You should, take a picture. you should take a picture and post that and say, hey, for those that don't believe in Santa, here's the living proof. I told my kids all the time, Santa's real. You know, I'm daddy Claus. But I was up there one day going by aisle center. We had a snow blowing and I got a picture of that thing and sent it. And I said, man, yeah, I was hanging out with Santa last week. And they thought I was kidding. I'm going to show them the picture. And they're like, oh, my God, dad. So, yeah, that was just when we say landmarks that are real to the area around you. Yeah, I have actually a picture of the house in that video that I'm going to share. So, for sure. That is so cool. I would totally use that in a what's your home worth, really worth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's Santa's home worth? <laughs> I, would put, I would put priceless under that for the value. Seriously. Yeah. Yep. Dude, I had some serious clout with my son while he, when he was younger. And I'm like, dude, Santa and I are like this. You better be good. I even actually called my brother one time and I'm like, Santa, Joey Renshaw wants to talk to you because he was being naughty. 
And Joey's like, no, 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 I don't want to talk to him. And I'm like, no, you're talking to Santa. Tell him what happened. <laughs> and my brother just starts laughing. And he's like, hello, is this Joey Renshaw? And Joey just about messed his pants. It was hysterical. <laughs> anyway. Wow. That would, that would blow my daughter's mind. That would. So this is like, um, there have been so many good ideas. I've been taking notes. I have more notes than paper. But the uh, key thing here is what's the one takeaway that you really want to run with? And uh, I'm going to say one of the inspirations for today is Wendy getting her hair done while being on the mastermind. So like what's stopping us from taking action today? If Wendy can be on the mastermind while getting her hair done, we can all take action on the one thing that we really want to see, like realize in our business. And so I loved how Linnea, how you shared that whole mindset thing within like, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to like creep on somebody's privacy, right? I think that's a really good point. I think that's a really good point. But when we, when we realize that we're coming with so much value, when we're actually serving people, it changes the way we think about things. And when we change the way we think about things, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, this is the direction that we're moving. And it becomes a lot easier to move in that same direction because our mind's already moving in that direction. So uh, it's the same thing. So like whatever it is that we're really excited about seeing realized in our, in our, um, our week this week, just re realize you're coming from a place of value. There's a lot of people who really, really need your help. They really need someone to guide them. They need somebody to help them to find their home, to uh, to sell their home, to list, to come up with good strategy of how to list right now. Because who knows what the market value does uh, is they don't. They have no idea. Their homes are like all around them are selling for different values. And they have no idea what the value is, how they should be pricing. They need your help today to help strategize, to figure out a plan. And they need your help to negotiate on their behalf to navigate buying a home, to navigate making that next transaction realized so that they have that dream. Because there's a lot of people who would actually like to be in a home for Christmas. There's a lot of people who would like to be in a home the next year. Uh, maybe they've got that, that move coming up and they've been, you know, they've been planning for it and they need to make that, uh, that, that realized. And so they, you are providing so much value. Know that, let that be your momentum moving forward and, uh, and go and crush it and build some great relationships with some uh, hair salons. <laughs> So they can refer you out because they're always having those conversations. That's a well said. Uh, thank you. I have a phone call, so I'm going to be leaving, but I just wanted to say thank you, everyone. This has been great. Yeah, really appreciate you. it. Thank you, Leslie. Thank, thank you, everyone, you. as well. Really appreciate you all.